Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive? What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is Cloak and Dagger. Black Warfare. Espionage, international intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's story, The People in the Forest, is suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. The plane began to slow down, and then it circled slowly. Someone pulled the cover off the jump hole, and I got my first view of France. Occupied France, August 1944. Action stations. On the ground to the right, I could see fires, like safety matches lit in the moonlight. And I wondered how big they really were, those fires that were out there to guide us in. The dispatcher told me I was to jump second. Running in. Ready, number one? Ready. And then it happened. The first bad break of that mission. Only it didn't happen to me, it happened to Chris Fowler. See you in France, Capella! Okay, Fowler. Number one. Good luck. Go! Geronimo! I just stood there, looking down, watching him go. And then my heart started to pound all over me. My breath caught, and I nearly choked on it. Chris fell and fell and fell... The chute didn't work. It came out of the bag and streamed unopened behind him. Paratroopers call that a Roman candle. Tough break. Want to turn back, Scarpella? Huh? Uh, no. No, I'll jump it. Okay, then. Ready, number two? Number two. Ready? Ready? Jump! <laughs> The wind came up and hit me in a rush. I felt myself falling. I think I died a few times until I heard the crack of the chute. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. The most beautiful sight in the whole world, that big white umbrella over me. The little safety matches on the ground got bigger and bigger. I realized they were torches. And then I saw a figure of a man waving. He started to get bigger, too. And then the torches were put out. I was about to get my first introduction to the French underground. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. I saw what happened to your friend. It was too bad. Yeah. You had courage to jump after that. Maybe if I'd stopped to think about it, I never would have. Maybe I was afraid I'd... Never jump again if I didn't then. Well, anyway, here I am. My name is Captain Robert Scarpella. Captain Robert Scarpella. American. Welcome. Welcome to France. I'm ecstatic to make your acquaintance, Captain. <laughs> the little guy threw his arms around <laughs> me and friend. kissed me. When I was Welcome. 12, I'd said nicks to my kissing friend. my father goodnight because it embarrassed Welcome. me. And here was this little Frenchman with the beret and baggy pants <laughs> and farmer's shoes with his arms around. <laughs> hey, cut it off, will I you? am just so happy to see you, Barrett. <laughs> well, I'm the Fox. The Germans themselves gave me that name. Look at his head. Would you believe there is a price on it? Oh, uh, are you the leader? Yes, of one of our little bands. The British radio alerted us about your coming. Well, there's a good reason for my coming, Captain Fox. You may call me simply Fox. Okay. Fox. <laughs> now let's pick up supplies that were brought to you. Right. As for your mission, Captain, there will be time enough to, t to talk about it when we get deeper into the forest to our hideaway. Uh, is it very far from here? Unfortunately, there's a little walk. We were forced to move our headquarters last night after another German raid. Oh? What do you mean, another? Our positions have been raided three times the past month, almost as if the Bosch were given a map of where we were in the forest. Oh? 
Sounds to me like somebody's dirty work. I have thought of that, Captain. But if there is a traitor in our group, I shall find him. We know how to deal with such. <laughs> I'll bet you do. Oh, here we are. Oh, <laughs> That's nice. Very, very, very nice. <laughs> this Carmen rifle, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Now, there are shoes in those packages, too, and food and grenades. Oh, what a beautiful rifle. Uh, I was to tell you to expect a heavy supply drop in a few weeks. Oh, what a beautiful rifle. We still are using field pieces from the Franco-Prussian War. But this is a beauty. <laughs> now gather up your things, Captain Scarpella. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll be back. The fox disappeared into the woods. The whole thing seemed like a crazy nightmare. The whole forest surrounded by Germans. And yet here I was passing the time of day just like nothing at all with a Frenchman who had a price on his head. And somewhere out there where he drifted, Chris was a dead heap under a lot of parachute silk. I grabbed a gun and I waited for trouble. I didn't know whether to go after the fox and take a chance on being ambushed to stay where I was. Someone was coming. I ducked behind a tree. The only thing I could figure was the Germans had seen the plane, seen me land. I took aim. Carefully. Slowly. American. American, where are you? Oh, for crying out loud, what happened? What were those shots? <laughs> I just wanted to get the feel of your gun. So I simply tried it on a couple of Germans over the edge of the hill. <laughs> it sights very well, though. <laughs> oh, crying out loud. This little dinner party is in your honor, Captain Scarpella. Oh? I regret we have nothing better than wild rabbits to offer you. Well, it's a swell. Quite a welcome. Headquarters didn't tell me to expect anything like this. <laughs> Luzette, more wine for the captain. But of course. Here, yeah, I will refill your glass. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh, mais non. In France, we say thank you. This way. Hey. <laughs> You mind my kissing you? Oh, no, no, not at all. I love Americans. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All Americans. Uh, hey. Come help me, I need your help. <laughs> Lucette, let go. <laughs> Marie's calling you. Oh, oui, maman, I am coming. <laughs> uh, she's a very pretty girl, that... Uh, Lucette, Lucette, Lucette. <laughs> yeah. And very young. Yeah. Only 17. Oh? Already she has seen so much. Hiding like this in the forest, sneaking back into the German-held village. Into the village? Oui, monsieur. Many of our group work in the village, right under the noses of the enemy. And the Germans do not know that they are members of the Maquis. Oh, but they know you're here. Oh, they know, they know that we're here, but they do not dare come near the forest, except in big raiding parties. Uh -huh. <laughs> they know very well that to one dead of ours, there will be twelve dead of theirs. Well, Captain, now about your mission. Its purpose? Tell me more, please. Well, I was sent here to find out the German defense plans for the Port of San Nazaire and the entire coastal area around here. Ah. Now, I know those plans are in German headquarters in the village. And you request our help? I've got to have those plans, and in a matter of days. I've got to deliver them personally to 8th Corps headquarters. Now, put your mind at ease, Captain Scarpella. The fox will help you. <laughs> now, the first thing I will do is put you in Attention! Attention! Captain Scarpella, I'm Marie. Ah. <laughs> She's the mother cat of that little kitten who kissed you before. <laughs> oh, well, uh, happy to meet you. And we are all enchanted to meet you, American. In your honor, we have a special surprise. Listen. Attention. Un, deux, trois. Take me out to the ball again. Well, <laughs> For crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> You're pleased, Captain Scarfella. Well, this is something to write home about. Write home about? Yeah. Yeah, a nice, cozy evening with friends. Oh, you never know, there was a war going on. Nibos! Nibos! Alert! Alert! Where is the lookout? There are two Germans trucks about a kilometer from here, Captain Fox. I see, I see. What else? There are two divisions at least of German soldiers oh, surrounding see. us. Captain Scarpella, 
I regret very much to have interrupted your welcome party in this manner. René? Oui, le fox. René? Oui. Uh, the new machine our American friend brought with him. Oui. Now, what is it called, Captain Scarpella? A bazooka. Oh, yes, this b- 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 bazooka. bazooka. Now, take it, take it to an advantageous position, you understand? Oui, Fox. Now, listen. Yes, now, my friend, my friend. Now is the best time for him and some of the others to learn how to use it. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> I thought it seemed like a nightmare before. It was nothing to what happened now. It's so mixed up in my mind, I can't remember it clearly. It wasn't anything like the patrols I'd been trained for in the Army. Now, Captain Scarpella, follow me, please. All right. Ah. <laughs> These Germans are becoming very annoying. Uh, w- would you mind pointing that the other way, Fox? Oh, yes, huh? yes, excuse me. <laughs> This b- b- bazooka is a beauty. Just a little beauty. <laughs> From out of nowhere, a German soldier fell forward on his face. And then the fox and I moved on. I remember thinking, cripes, this is like kids playing cops and robbers. French boys, still in their teens, ran by with a cross of Lorraine sewn on their coats. I saw Marie take aim behind a tree. And all the time, the fox kept smiling. He never stopped smiling. I feel selfish, Captain Scarpella. Give me that gun. I will let you borrow yours a while. They are about 50 yards ahead. There is a juicy rabbit in German uniform. Oh? Please, get him. (laughs) Captain LaFox was right. The rifle did sight well. And then all of a sudden there were less Frenchmen around and more Germans all around us. In a case like this, my friend... The best course is to run. Well, let us run. (laughs) This forest is like a jigsaw puzzle to me. You know it backwards. It is from necessity, of course. I regret exceedingly that I must ask you to join me here in this swamp. We will stay here till it is safe to leave. Shh, shh, shh. Let watch. Under the water, all right? Leave only your nose above it to breathe. Oh, he's in the teufel. They are ghosts. How can one fight what one cannot see? I think we have in this time, Herr Hoffman. They are scattered and disorganized. Uh-huh. Perhaps this is the end of our trouble with them. Relaxed. They are retreated. Those arrogant devils may return again. Well, we'll find out from our informant later how good a job we have done this time. Yeah. Well, I'm going up ahead. Shall I stay here as guard? Mm. No. It is not necessary. There's nothing here. Come better with me. Yeah, here, yeah. Hoffman. <coughs> they have posted a guard here. It would have been most inconvenient, Captain Scarpella. Are you very wet? Uh, what do you think? Well, there will be clean clothes for you at our hideout. Come. It is time for us to go there. Well, this has been a very annoying evening, Captain. Fox. <laughs> Fox, did you hear what they said about... Uh... An informant. I heard. I heard. <laughs> Captain Scarpella, Marie is employed as charwoman in German headquarters in the village. She is the contact of whom I spoke. Uh What can I do to help you? Just tell me. There are plans for the defense of San Nazar. What do you think the chances are that they may be in the files of the office where you work, Marie? Very good, I would say. Uh, Marie, Marie, tell me, what are my chances of getting into those files? Also very good. Mm -hmm. The door of the Hauptmann's office is left open for me, so I may wash the floors. I see. It will be easy to enter. As for the files, I have a key. A key? Wait, I will give it to you. Well, this is better than I hoped for. When can we go, tomorrow? Tomorrow? Why not now? The Germans are still out searching the forest, and the coast will be clear. Let us leave now. Well, I'll say it for you, Captain Scarpella. 
for crying out loud. <laughs> Less than an hour later, we were in the village. It was five o'clock in the morning, and there was no one around. The village slept. Captain Scarpella, listen to me. Yeah. There is the German headquarters across the street. Mm -hmm. I will leave you and go inside to get my mop and bucket. You will watch through the window. Right. When I distract the guard, go quickly to the side door. It is open. Uh -huh. The Hauptmann's office is the third door from the end. The third, huh? You have the key to the to the files, huh? Yes, 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 I have it. Bon, I go now. Remember the signal I give you, in case of danger. I watched her go into the building. And then I took up my position at the open window. There was a guard at the front desk. No one else around. I pressed myself into the shadows. And after a while, Marie came to the front desk and began to mop the floor. What are you doing here, Charlie? I'm not that early, Sergeant. And the sooner I finish, the sooner I am through. I'll go about your business, sir. I knew that soon she'd do I something to distract him. You're disturbing me. <laughs> this, this too must, must be worse, no? I will be through presently. Ah! Try to the ark. Oh, you spilled that all over I'm my boots. I'm so sorry, no. so sorry. It was not deliberate. All over my boots. Look at the mess. The side door was open and she said it would be. Try for this. One, two, three. The third door from the end. Start over at the other end of the room. I said, I made it. The German captain's office. And in the corner were the files. The key in my hand was hot and sticky. It fit. It fit. The key fit. I knew it would, but somehow it went slid in and turned. I took a breath of relief. I didn't have much time. I knew it didn't have much time. I had to find those plans, but where? The papers, where were they? And I heard Marie's signal. And I froze. What a break. But I couldn't stop searching now. Where are they? I only meant that. Almost as if God had put it into my hand at the right moment, I found the photostatic copies of the defense plans. Now, if she could only hold them off until I got out of the place. Let's see now, let's see. The window, that's it. It was only a short drop to the ground and still no one in sight. I had a feeling Marie could take care of herself and I started back for the forest, the plans in my pocket. Uh, see here, Captain Scarpella. I'm the mayor. Mm -hmm. You see? You come out of the forest three miles north at this point. Right. Is that uh, a clear road, Fox? You will have no difficulty, Captain. There has never been any reason for the Bosch to post guards at this exit. Mm -hmm. Now pay attention, Captain. Yeah. I must talk to you. Both of you. Marie, what are you doing back at the farmhouse? Why are you not in the village? Marie, was there trouble after I left through that window? Do they, do they know about the papers? They know. Because they were told... Told by a dirty little spy from our own ranks. What? Now, please, quiet. This is my business, Captain. Speak, Marie. I overheard the spy. One of us. I blush with shame to think of it. The spy was telling the bush captain about the papers and the American's mission. Fortunately for you, Captain Scarpella, the spy was not able to warn him early go on, enough. Go on, go on, Marie. Go on. And the road is blocked, however. You are trapped here, American. You may have the plans... But there is no way for you to leave and deliver them. The road north is swarming with red ants of Germans. The traitor. His name. Give me his name, Marie. I will do better. I will give you the traitor. René, bring her in here. Come no, on. no, please, please. Throw her on the floor. On the floor. Get me with her once. I Just said once. throw her on the floor. No. Listen to her, sir. My own daughter, torn from my own flesh. For I, daughter, not for what is going to be done to you, but for what you have done, spy, traitor. This girl, my daughter. I spit on her. I did not know. I, I waited did not for her outside. I was doing. After I, I hurt her with the captain, 
A German captain. I waited for her and, and dragged her back here. Fox, do what you want with her. Lozette. No, no. Lozette, look at me. No, no. Was it you? You who gave away our positions each time? Answer. Yes. Yes, I told them. It has been so hard. I have known war for so long now. All my life, it seems. I have known two wars. Would I turn on my own? I'm glad your, your father is dead. So he does not see this. They promised me so much. I did not think it so bad. I, I only gave them small bits of information. Small bits of information? <laughs> Except for this last about the American. You call giving away our hideout small, loser? We are so much smarter than they. <laughs> and, and, and it always gave us a chance to kill so many oh, of them. <laughs> your excuses disgust me. Say the word, Fox. Let me throw her to the rest. No, no, Mama. Pity, a pity. I am, I am your mother no longer. Do not call me that. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me. Fox, this may be your affair, but I've got a stake in it. Now, what do you wish to say, Captain? There's only one way out of this forest. It's blocked right now. Thanks to her. Now, let's forget that. All that matters to me is that I get through with these plans. Now, Lizette. Lizette, do you want a chance to prove yourself? Oh, we, oui, we, oui, I will do anything. Do not listen to her, Marie, Captain. Marie, Marie. Two faces she has. Now, quiet. Go on, Captain. Now, at German headquarters before, Marie distracted the guard because she knew him. Now, who knows the Germans at the exit to the forest to distract them? I do. I will. Let me, please. They trust me. I will give you a chance to slip by. It is too great a risk, my friend. I have no choice. I can't stay trapped here. The plans are no good in my pocket. Very well. On one condition. I will go alone. And if she does not do as she says, the fox will shoot her through the heart. You have my permission. Ah. <laughs> there are many clouds out tonight to hide the moon. Well, the darker the better. Lucette, there are your friends at the foot of the hill. Go to them. We will hide here among these piles of firewood. We, oui. we, oui, I will go. And remember, Lozette, this gun is aimed at you. Go. We hid behind towering cords of tree trunks and branches piled in the woodlot for the village's firewood. We watched. A few minutes later, we saw them, the soldiers and the girl silhouetted against the moon. We couldn't hear what they were saying, but every once in a while we heard them laugh. They swarm about her like bees about a flower. Come this way. We will sneak past them and into the brush. Quiet now. She's doing a good job trying to redeem herself. Shh. You stupid American. It's completely black, but no way out. You're a sly one, Lucette. You're a sly one, Klug. It's time to be through. The help wants to don't make a mistake yeah, with yeah. you, no? <laughs> there are advantages to being an officer, eh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, my son! Oh, we're caught. Please see you, American! Run! Run! Captain, this way. Into the brush. Oh, get back, oh, Lucette! Oh, oh, get back, let go of the gun! I looked back over my shoulder and saw Lizette crumple into a heap on the road. I knew she was dead. Do not grieve for her, my friend. It is best this way. It is easier than living with herself. How do we get out of this? We're surrounded. You're surrounded, American. Surrender. Surrender? What means that word? We know you're in the wood lot. We have you cornered. Come out. Perhaps this will help you, Mincho. Hopper, over there. Step out of the bush. Come on, you do the same. They're come trying on. to burn us out. If we come out, we'll be shot down by the machine guns. American, I have an idea. Yeah. Stand here. Mm -hmm. When you hear a loud crash and I call out, you run through the fire. It is not bad yet, my friend. He ran like the fox of his nickname to the tallest pile of firewood. 
In the dark night, I saw him struggle with a log at the base of the pile, and then the huge tower of wood came tumbling down and screamed. Ah! I plunged through the fire and found the pass. And a few minutes later, the sly fox miraculously joined me. You can make it from here alone to the American lines, Captain Scarpella. What about you, Fox? Ah, don't worry about it, Fox. I'll get back all right. Perhaps we shall meet again one day, Captain. Who knows? Well, au revoir, then. Goodbye. I never looked back. And I never saw him again. But when I think of him now... I think of him not with the beret, but with a green hat and a feather. A little like Robin Hood. Captain Scarpella delivered the plans personally to the assistant G2 at 8th Corps headquarters. And he was recommended for the Distinguished Service Cross for the American lives he had saved at the port of Saint-Nazaire. Thus, the exploits of another OSS agent closes with the words... Mission accomplished. A further adventure in black warfare is next week's... Cloak and Dagger. in today's Cloak and Dagger adventure were Joseph Buloff, Lily Darvoss, Larry Haynes, Nancy Franklin, Barry Kroger, Raymond Edward Johnson, Carl Weber, Boris Applin, and Jerry Jarrett. Script for Cloak and Dagger was written by Winifred Wolfe, and the music was under the direction of John Gart. Today's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger, by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This has been a Lewis G. Cowan production in association with Alfred Hollander. It was under the direction and supervision of Sherman Marks. Robert Warren speaking. Stay tuned now for the up-to-the-minute news on the Open Golf Championship. <laughs>